Welcome to this week's edition of Rick Answers His Email. First up is Nolan from Roosevelt, Utah, who has lost a Windows 2000 password and wanting to know if there's a way to get around it. They've already tried safe mode, can't get around the administrator's password. There is no easy way around it. You can do some registry editing. You can try to boot from your Windows 2000 disk and go through a bunch of steps to get it going. You can download various password cracker type programs, but beware, there's a lot of those that have tons of spyware. If you just search Google for lost Windows 2000 password, you're going to come up with a gazillion ideas, and some of them work, some of them don't. Bottom line is it's very, very tough. It's there because it's for security, and that's why it's hard to get around it. Anwar has a problem with a D-Link router. When he tries to connect through his wireless, he gets a Windows unable to find a certificate to log you on to the network error. Sometimes it's as easy as doing some of the solutions he's talking about here. Probably the best thing to do is go to D-Link's website, go to the support part of their website, download the newest firmware available for the D-Link router, your particular model, and then reset the router back to its default settings and start again re building your wireless network and you'll Pete has a question where he's currently subscribing to the AVG antivirus and he wants to move over to the free version wondering if he should uninstall before he re uninstall the pay version before installing the free version yes I would definitely do that download the free one have it ready to go uninstall the one that you've been paying for it'll make you reboot the system then when you reboot you can install the free one Pat went ahead and took the bait on an automatic Windows update that's been around for about a month, month and a half, the Internet Explorer 8. And for a lot of people, they can update and have no problems at all. But unfortunately, Internet Explorer is so integrated into so many programs that a lot of folks do have problems. I'm going to say it's almost a 60-40 good versus bad update for a lot of people. And she wants to know, can she revert back? Yes, you can. Go to my website, helpmerick.com, search for System Restore and you should be able to restore your computer back to before you put that update on there or if you go into add and remove programs look for Internet Explorer 8 in the remove, add and remove programs remove it and it'll go back and revert to whatever Internet Explorer you had on there before good luck Jonathan has a question about selecting multiple photos in iPhoto with his Macintosh computer and he said that for some reason the command key holding down the command key and clicking on his keyboard didn't work to highlight multiple photos the only thing I can think Jonathan is maybe in your control panel in your settings of the Mac there are lots of customizations you can do to your keyboard and maybe you've got something in there that you've changed or is not the default setting and that's why you can't select multiple photos but it should work by using the command plus click Gina has a question that says her computer does not recognize a memory card from a friend's or a granddaughter's camera and she's wondering what's going on. Could be that if she has, an you didn't mention what type of card you're using, if it's the SD card, little small SD cards like this, then you might be in a situation where if she's using a 4, or lar four gigabyte or larger that's called a SDHC, which stands for high capacity. And unfortunately, the high capacity disks are not readable on a standard little card reader. And you'd have to get a second card reader that will read the high capacity disks in order to do that. Walt sends in a registry tweak for Windows Vista users who are having trouble with their Vista machine recognizing their CD or DVD ROM. And so he found a way to get around that by going through this particular set of instructions. I have not tried it. I'm not endorsing it, but Walt, I think, is a pretty good guy. I know him. So uh, take it with a with my warning. Registry editing, is, registry editing is never easy. It's always to be danced around very carefully, especially through the direction of someone like he had an IBM engineer helping him. But Walt, I appreciate you sharing your info with other folks. Kathleen has a problem also with a CD-ROM, interestingly enough. After she installed Norton 360, she's lost the ability to access her D drive, which is her CD-ROM. And she's wondering if Norton 360 normally causes problems like that. How can she fix it? I'm going to say probably not Norton in this case. But what I would do to try to get your functionality back is think back to a time when you knew it was working and restore your computer back to that particular time 
and see if the CD-ROM is working then or not. If it is, then you know something happened, either a Windows update or another program you installed caused the problem. If it still doesn't work after you roll back the system to a date you knew it was working, you could have a hardware failure. You might want somebody to look at it for you. Eve is writing in wondering where to get cassette tapes transferred to CDs. And I think what I'd recommend since you're in the Western Colorado area is calling Snap Photo in Grand Junction. Just look up Snap Photo on the web or in your phone book. And they usually are pretty good about, if they don't do it, they can recommend someone who can convert your cassette tapes to CDs. I know they do videos, but I'm not sure if they're doing music or not, but you can try them out. Steve wants to back up some Thunderbird email or Outlook email, and he's wondering what the what is the best way to do it. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to do either one of those. If you're using Thunderbird, you can click Start, Run, type in this little command here, and then you hit Return on your keyboard. You'll find your Thunderbird folder listed under many others in this folder. Double-click on it, find your Profiles folder, and then double-click on that and then you'll be able to see your Mozilla Thunderbird profile and at that point you can back up all the files underneath that when you want to bring it into your new computer you're going to build an account first and then copy these files back into the new account on the new system for backing up Outlook all you need to do is search for outlook.pst and once you find that file you can back it up it could be kind of large because when you back up the outlook.pst file it has all of your email your contacts, your calendar to-do lists, anything that you have in Outlook is all contained in that one file. Elizabeth has the same problem as an earlier person who's upgraded to Internet Explorer 8, had a bunch of problems, wanting to know, she's wanting to know how to get back to Internet Explorer 7, and you can do the same thing I talked to her earlier about, which is go to Add or Remove Programs, look for Internet Explorer 8, and remove it or you can use System Restore on your system to push your system back to the date before you installed Internet Explorer 8. Good luck. Thanks for writing in this week and thanks for listening and I'll be back again next week with more answers to your questions.